Right, hello year 13s. This is the mechanics walkthrough of the baseline assessment you just recently took. So you've got a particle P moves along the x-axis, that's horizontally. Now it's got an acceleration of P at time t seconds. And it's at 3t plus 5 in the positive x direction. So this is indicated by this diagram here. Now, as acceleration changes with time, because it's impacted by time, you have to realise that this is not constant acceleration. So do not use SUVACT here. All right, not constant, because acceleration changes. Now, you need to remember that the acceleration equals the velocity over time, so that's dv dt, which in turn equals 3t plus 5 is given in the question. Now when t equals t, the velocity of p is 6 meters per second. Find the value of t. So first we need to find the velocity, so the velocity equals the integral of dv dt, which is 3t plus 5 in respect to dt. That will give us the velocity. So we integrate that, so we raise the power by 1, that will give us t squared, we still have the 3, and divide by the new power over 2. And we should know that's plus 5t, and of course there could be a constant, so we put the plus c in. Now, we need to find c. But when t equals 0, so when t equals 0, we have v equals 2. So we just substitute that in. Now once we have that, we substitute that, sub into v. Now when t equals 0, this is going to become 0 and that's going to become 0. So and v equals 2, so 2 must equal c. And we can write the next line, which is, that means v equals 3 over 2t squared plus 5t plus 2. Now that's quite straightforward. Now let's see, what other information do we have? When t equals t, the velocity of p is 6. Find the value of t here. So we let v equals 6. Let v equals 6. So we're going to go 6 equals 3 over 2t squared plus 5t plus 2. Now we don't like this 2 underneath so we're going to multiply everything by 2. So we're going to get 12 equals 3t squared. We need to times this by 2 plus 10t plus 4. Now we want to make this a quadratic so we're going to set to 0 to solve. Set to 0. So we're going to get 0 equals 3t squared plus 10t and minus 12 on both sides will give us minus 8. Now you should be good at factorising. So that's going to give you 3t minus 2 and t plus 4. Now in the question t is a big T so you should arguably write this as a big T but this will be fine. So from here we know t or big T equals 2 over 3 or t equals minus 4. Now we know we're not going to get a negative time so not valid in the context of the question so we could just say therefore T, which is big T equals 2 over 3 and that's your marks now I'm going to show you the marks you get for each stage because that's important so up to here that will get you your M1 mark uh, your accuracy will be here for accuracy you get for C equals 2 your B1 mark, 
Then you've got your dependent method mark on your rest of your work. So that's a DM1 it's called. For factorising here, and I should have set that equal to zero, um, that's your M1, and that's your answer one, that's how you get six out of six each step, nice and clear. And that should be a banker question for you all, now that I've gone through it, I hope that helps. Right, now let's look, have a look at this question. Because the two particles in A and B have the masses, we can just write this as habit, but we might not need to use it. Now particle A is at rest on a smooth horizontal table, so no friction, smooth pulley, uh, so tension should be the same on the strings, and particle B hangs at rest below the pulley with the string taut, so we've got tension acting the other way and tension acting the other way because it's being held at A, so the tension will be at the other way. Now we've got F equals MA. So if we have to resolve horizontally, now we're resolving horizontally, we can ignore this, we don't need that. For A, all right, this is for A, for A. So we have T must equal mass times acceleration, which is 2M, the mass is 2M and A. Now, for R, Acting down because that's the movement we're talking at, about, because that's the way the pulley is going to go. So for B, we actually have 3mg minus t equals what? The mass here is 3m and A is acceleration. Now, I'm going to label them 1 and 2 because we have resolving horizontally and vertically. Now we can see this is a simultaneous equation. So if we add equation one to two, because the t is the same, those t's will cancel. So we get three mg will equal two ma plus three uh, ma together. Now we can cancel out the m's. So we get three g equals five a. So a must equal three g over 5. So you understand where we're getting our marks from. That gets you a mark. That gets you a method and accuracy. That gets you a uh, dependent method mark based on you getting everything else correct. And that's your accuracy mark, which we should write that equals 5.9 or 5.88 round to two or three significant figures okay and that is your five out of five quite easily achieved now for part b we're trying to find the tension in the string now let's have a think part b well we already know use the easiest form we have t equals 2 ma and we have a equals 3 g over 5 from before so the tension is going to equal uh, 2m times 3g over 5, which is going to give us 6mg over 5, which equals 11.8m. We don't know what m is, so that will be enough for your answer. That will get you your B1 mark. Now part C. It's asking us to find the magnitude and direction of the force exerted on the pulley by the string. Now imagine that this is distance. This length here is T. This length here is T. Now the magnitude, always think Pythagoras, and we have a nice right angle here. So what do we do? F equals, use Pythagoras theorem, which is a square root of a squared plus b squared, which in this case is t squared plus t squared. Now we know what t squared is, because it's this 6mg here. So essentially this is uh, the square root of 2t squared. Okay, so we're going to 
that would simplify to root 2 and root t squared which will leave you with root 2 t uh, just the rules of thirds here remember when you multiply thirds you can combine them now how could we write that nicely so we know t equals 6 mg over 5 so that's 6 mg over 5 plus the root 2 from before here and if we can simplify that we can say that's going to be 16.6 m and I'm pretty sure uh, you'll get the mark for just writing that anyway so let's see how we get our marks here nine to do this will give you your method and accuracy mark accuracy mark for this section now we've missed the point which is this bit it asks for the direction well if these two sides are the same we should know that's a 45 degree angle right and that has to be 45 degrees as well so the direction to show the direction on your diagram you get the mark all this right here 45 degrees um, from a below horizontal below horizontal at a below horizontal at a and then that gives you the extra b1 mark now that is a fairly straightforward 4 out of 4 and I should write that it was part well I'm going to go over this question in detail now we've got a non-uniform plank so the centre of mass could be anywhere AB is a length 6 metres and its mass is 30 kg hence we've got this 30 g hit okay and that could be that's the mass of the plank the plank rests in equilibrium in a horizontal position on supports S and T and it gives you the details here A to S is 0.5 T to B is 2 meters. That's all key information. Now, when a block of mass M kg is placed on plank A, so imagine there's a block here, it's placed on A, the plank remains horizontal and in equilibrium but the plank is on the point of tilting about s so what can we remember what does that what does that mean well that means it's about to tip over but we can conclude the moments on clockwise and anti-clockwise are going to be the same so Let's take our moment. That's when we've got this unknown plank MG here. I mean, unknown block MG here. So, moments about S. So, this way, anti clockwise, is going to be 0 0.5 MG. 0 0.5 MG. Now, you've got resultant force here. But we were taking moments from zero, uh, S, we can ignore that. Okay. Now, let's see, what do we have here? We've got from here to here. That's got to be equal 30G multiplied by something. Now, we know that the distance of the centre of mass is called D. All right. Now we don't know where that could be, it could be all the way up to here. So what we know is 30g, so if this was the centre of mass, this was the centre of mass, we know it's d away but we've got to minus this 0 0.5 here, so that's why you're going to get d minus 0 0.5, wonderful. So let's make this clear why this is d minus 0 0.5 is if we just assumed any point that this is the centre of mass here 
okay so it's this distance here which is d minus the distance we're given here because we're taking moments from s okay now there's a key point where you think well what about this normal reaction here why do we not include it right it, this is on the point of tilting about s so this plank if the blocks here it's going to tilt this way okay now if it's going to tilt this way and it's about to tilt then there's no reaction force here it's about to move that force here is going to be zero okay there's nothing going to be acting there's no weight acting on this so that has to be zero now that answers that bit now this is actually a fairly tricky question because you have to take two sets of moments now this is part b moments about t now and i'll tell you why about t because a block is going to be moved to b mg here and it's a point of tilting about t so if it's at the point about tilting about t even though you have a reaction here a reaction at t and a possible reaction at s but remember this is on the point of tilting so there's nothing acting on this this is about to go up into the air so that you can take that that's going to be zero now you could arguably do this question by taking moments about A and moments about B and including the reactions here, but you've got just got to work out so much more. Best to take the moments about T because then you're taking one less variable out of the question. So moments about T, you've got, that's your clockwise. So your clockwise, you've got two mg. Should be happy about that now. What about our D here? Well, we know that this whole thing is six. Right, so here to here must be four. So what distance do we need to write down for this point here? Well, it's got to be four minus this distance d right so that's going to be 30 g times 4 minus d now that might be a lot to take in but if you get this right that's your method one and accuracy one mark that's two marks you can do that so that's your method and accuracy here that's four marks now we just need to find d now if you can see we have let's call that equation one and equation two. What can we do to it uh, to uh, just get D on its own? So let's just write them both one on top of each other up here and 0.5 mg. equals 30g d minus 0.5 now there's multiple ways that you can um, manipulate this um, now that's called equation one and equation two now you can manipulate this any way you want but obviously you just want to leave everything in terms of d and g because we know what g is so it makes sense just to divide um, 1 divided by 2 so 2 divided by 0 0.5 is going to give us 4 and of course those mg's will cancel each other out equals can you see that's why we divide those two will cancel each other out and we're just going to get 4 minus d over d minus 0 0.5 so multiply both sides by d minus 0.5 so we're going to get 4d I'm just going to expand that out minus 2 right equals 4 minus d so we're going to get 5d with plus d on both sides 5d equals 
6. So D equals 6 over 5, which equals 1.2. So D equals 1.2 meters. Find the value of M. Well, how can we find the value of M? Is we can substitute M into any one of these. I mean, not M, but D. Let D equals 1.2 here. Type in the calculator and just solve it and you'll get m equals 42 because you can expand all this out and solve it and this will give you all a dependent method mark an accuracy here and it's an accuracy to find out m okay and then that should hopefully explain that question to you all Just try this 11 mark exam question. You've got a ball projected at speed u. We've got this. From a point out at the top of a vertical cliff. And they've given us a diagram. It's 25 meters here. So we need to take all this into context. It's projected at 45 degrees. It's given in the question. But we can draw this now, so even if it was all worded, we can do it. And it hits the ground a n uh, when that's 100 meters. So it lands at a. The motion of the ball is modeled that of a particle moving through under gravity. Using this initial model, show that u equals 28. Okay, so it's a show that one, but I'm pretty sure we've got the skills to do this. Let's give this a go. Do pause the video at any moment. So, what can we need? News. We can use, let's say, what's that going to be? Can we remember? That's U cos 45 that way. And um, vertically, that's U side 45. Because we could use this. Now, because we've got this 100 meter distance here, and this is going to fall quite steeply like so, we should really resolve horizontally using um, SUVAT um, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Right that's our first step it's a six marker and you'll see why we need to use that so resolving horizontally we get u equals um, well it's uv really equals u cos um, let's call that uv or ux i'm going to call that ux that equals u cos 45 right a equals zero so we get, we know the horizontal distance of 100 equals, um, well, it is just going to be u cos 45 from the original part, u cos 45 t. We have an equation here. Now let's use the vertical motion. same thing but this time you see if we're going upwards s equals minus 25 so you could start with either because you do need both of these but honestly not sure what to do just do both directions because you you should get some method marks so I'm using s equals ut plus a half at T squared again, we get S equals minus 25, uh, we get U sine 45T, uh, A equals minus 9.8 now, so we're going to get minus, just going to jump a step, minus 4.9T squared. Now we need to eliminate T and solve for you. 
So how can we do that? Now I have to think about this for a sec. And remember, because we've got different, we've got U, U and T, we need to use some thinking skills here. Now, we need to know that sine 45 equals root 2 over 2, cos 45 equals root 2 over 2. So, if we change this to 100 equals u root 2 over 2 uh, times t, and the one below we get minus 25 equals u root 2 over 2 t minus 4.9 t squared. Now can you see this section can be substituted here. So changing colour pen, we're going to use this 100 in replace of here. So we're going to get minus 25 equals 100 minus 4.9 t squared. So we're going to um, solve that and we're going to get 125 equals um, 4.9 t squared. And we're going to get t squared equals 125 over 4.9. Square root the answer, um, which is going to give us 25 root 2 over 7. Now if we substitute that plus or minus, but we're going to use a positive value of that. So if we use that and sub into here, we're going to get 100 equals u root 2 over 2 times 20, 25 root 2 over 7 that's going to cancel out to 100 equals u times 25 over 7 and then u will equal 28 that was a very tricky one for the six marks but if you can get up to here you would have got four out of six marks which you can all do now even if you got unstuck to show that u equals 28 you could still do part b using the value of u because we know now now know u equals 28 so this changes to 28 sine 45 and this way it changes to 28 cos 45 Find the greatest height of the ball above the horizontal ground. N to A. So we're finding the greatest horizontal flat, uh, height like so. Um, so we know we have to resolve upwards. We're going to get A equals minus 9.8. We need S. Think about at its greatest height, what do we know? V equals zero. We have U twenty-eight sine forty-five. What to that equation are we going to use? V squared equals U squared um, plus two AS. So, remember S, don't mistake that as a 5 because we have done that in class before, if you remember. So we get 3 squared equals u squared plus 2ah in this distance. We can even change the letter to h here. Um, so V equals 0, that's important to remember. U equals 28 sine 45. Um, a is 
minus 9.8, so that's um, minus 9.8, 19.6H. And you just solve that, rearrange that to get um, H equals um, 28 sine 45 divided by 19.6. And you should get 45 meters. So, can you see? Don't get all of part A. You can definitely all get four marks on part A. And you can hit these three marks there. That's seven marks on the old. And this is a very recent exam question. Now, let's look at the next part. In the refinement to the model of the motion of the ball from O to A, the effect of air resistance is included. This refined model is needed to find a new value of U. How would this new value of u compare with 28, the value given in part a? Well, the new value will be greater than 28 meters per second. Because if you count air resistance uh, for this model, for the same thing to happen in the model, then for N and A to make 100, U has to be greater because it's affected by air resistance. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, D, state one further refinement to your model that would make the model more realistic. So what could you use? Think about it. You've got lots of uh, options here. Uh, you can use a more accurate value for G. So D. More accurate value for G. Use your thinking caps. For G. Remember what the model's mark. Um, the ball's modeled as a particle. So um, it could be not modeled as a particle. Particle. Now, shape of ball includes spin. Includes spin, and that's your eleven out of eleven. All of this is doable. You can get marks on these types of questions. Even if you don't get all eleven, seven or eight out of eleven is certainly achievable by you all. Remember, like I said. Do go through all my videos again because we do forget skills and we will get this um, down. Do like the video if this has helped, just so I know this is worth my time.